In The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, you spend a lot of your time sailing on the Great Sea which covers the Kingdom of Hyrule. Today, we're going to recreate the iconic water in Shadergraph and URP. Make sure you have both installed via the Package Manager and check out the GitHub repository linked in the description for the full project. Before we get started, I've prepared two textures ahead of time. One is a flow map which will be used to control the motion of the foam on the surface, and the other is a Voronoi style texture which determines the foam pattern. To start off, create a new unlit graph by going to Create, Shader, Unlit Graph, and call the new graph stylized water. Before doing anything, use the Cog drop down menu to change the surface type to transparent, or else a later step involving depth won't work. We'll start off by adding the flow map, so we'll need four properties. One is a texture 2D called Flow Texture, for which we can assign the flow map as the default value. The second is a vector one called size, which determines how large the texture appears on the surface of the water. Give it a default of 2. The third is another vector one called flow strength, which controls how strongly the water surface distorts due to the flow map. This needs a default of 0.0075. And finally, another vector one called flow speed, which, as you can guess, influences how fast the flow animation plays. Give it a default of 0.01. The flow map encodes a set of direction vectors in each pixel by using the RGB color channels to represent the XYZ components of a vector. To extract those values, use a normal from texture node. Afterwards, multiply by flow strength to change the size of those vectors and therefore change the strength of the offset at each point. Not much will happen until we animate the texture over time. So add a time node and connect its time output, which represents unscaled time, into a multiply node. While testing, I found that the effect looks best if I divide flow speed by size, so do that and then connect the output to the other half of the multiply node. Finally, add everything so far to a new UV node, and then use the result as the UV pin on the normal from texture node. Now we can start thinking about rendering some foam on the surface. You can generate the foam pattern programmatically using the built-in Voronoi node, but I found it far easier to create my own tileable Voronoi style texture with a few tweaks and use that instead. Add another new texture 2D property called foam texture and assign the Voronoi texture as the default value. We're going to sample this texture twice. Also add three new colour properties called water colour, light foam colour and dark foam colour respectively. The light colour can be full white, but make the water colour blue and the dark colour a darker shade of that same blue. Start by adding the result of our flow map calculations to a new UV node, then multiply by size. Drag out a sample texture 2D node and use the result of that multiply in the UV slot, then plug in foam texture to the texture slot. Then, drag out an add node from the same multiply and add an offset of 0.1, 0 0.10 to it. Create another sample texture 2D using those offset UVs and the same foam texture property. To handle the colour, drag out a lerp node from the second sample texture and assign that to the T slot, then plug in water colour to the A slot and dark foam colour to the B slot. This will tint the water blue where the foam sample is black, and dark blue where the foam sample is white. Then, output that to the second LERP node's A input, and connect light foam colour to the B input. The T input will be the result of the first sample texture node. Finally, connect the output of the second LERP straight into the colour channel of the unlit master node. The water is looking great so far, but we also want to tint the water white where objects intercept the surface to simulate a bit of extra foam. To do this, we'll use the depth buffer to compare the depth value of the water pixel being drawn to the depth value already in the buffer, then tint the water white when this distance is small. Add a new vector 1 property called foam distance to control this distance threshold and give it a default of 1.5. We'll start by grabbing the depth value. Using the modified UVs from the flow map, add those to a screen position node. By adding the flow map, we can make the intersection foam distort too. Use the output of that in a scene depth node and set the sampling mode to I. The result of this is a singular value representing the depth of whatever is already in the buffer. We need to subtract the depth of the pixel we're about to draw. To do that, use a second screen position node in raw mode, use a split node to get only the fourth component, which represents the depth, and subtract that from the I depth from before. Divide this by the foam distance, and then saturate it to bound it between 0 and 1 and prevent weird graphical bugs, and connect this to a step node's in slot while setting the edge slot to 0.5. This is effectively an if statement, which says if the value is below 0.5, it becomes 0, else it becomes 1. To incorporate the intersection foam into the rest of the graph, add a third lerp node after the first two, then slot the result of the second into the B slot. Connect the light foam colour to the A slot, and the result of the step node into the T slot. Use that for the unlit master node's colour instead. We're almost done. Now all that's left to do is to add proper waves to the scene. 
We'll be distorting vertex positions like we did in the previous tutorial, so start by adding a choppiness property of type vector1 and give it a default of 0.01. Then add a position node in world space, use a split node to get the x and z components, since we're working on a 2D xz plane, and add them together. This way we'll get waves travelling diagonally across the surface of the water. Add this to a time node's regular time output, and slot this into a sine node so that it modulates over time. Multiply the result by the choppiness property, then create a brand new vector free with this as the y component, leaving the x and z as zero. This gives us an offset vector in the y direction which should differ by the xz position of the vertices. Finish things off by adding it to a new position node in object space, then slot this into the vertex position node on unlit master. With that, the effect is complete, and we can watch these waves submerge the default URP scene. This effect is surprisingly performant on my GPU, it manages to run at hundreds of frames per second without a hitch. You'll want to use a mesh with lots of vertices, or just tile a unity plane like I have here. As always, a huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters, each and every one of you make these tutorials possible, as do my subscribers, and everybody watching. If you think you learned something today, please consider subscribing to my channel, or my Patreon, and maybe use that share button to let a friend know about the magic of Shadergraph. Thanks for watching.